Hi, I'm Greg Palmer. We're here with Finnovate TV, coming to you from Finnovate Spring 2018. I'm sitting next to Brad Lemer, uh, the Managing Director at Explorer Advisory and Capital. We're going to be talking about augmented reality and virtual reality. Brad, you've been coming to Finnovate now for a number of years in a number of different capacities. It's always a pleasure getting the chance to catch up. Thank, Thank you very you. much for taking the time to chat with us. Appreciate having you. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've been here for 10 years, probably. Uh, and I think I haven't met, uh, missed a single one in Silicon Valley. Yeah. And so now, now it's like I, I have to go more global to like see you guys because you're going <laughs> everywhere now. That's it's right. Great. Well, good, good problem to have, I suppose, Absolutely. and always a pleasure in your home turf here in the yes. Bay Area. So um, let's go ahead and just jump right in. Uh, what, what banking services lend themselves well to AR and VR in your eyes? Yeah, so, you know, augmented reality is just coming into its very genesis, right? So you saw one in 10 Americans playing Pokemon Go, mm -hmm. and, and they were running around like chasing these Pikachus, and you thought, okay, well, how does that like relate to banking at all? And now you're seeing car manufacturers like develop car buying experiences where you could customize the car, and through the the headset or you know in inside the car dealership, you're actually able to see everything that you put inside the car, play with it, and actually drive it. Yeah. So you also have um, a lot of banks starting to get into how the home buying process changes. So you think the last time you bought a home, you're like looking at all these houses, and it's like you know as soon as you step in that house if you're going to actually ever buy that house. Yeah. So rather than looking at dozens upon dozens of houses in person, you could sit there and actually walk through these houses and have an experience for more than just looking at these static pictures. So you start to like think about traditional products and services and how they actually can be enhanced by not having to physically be there. Uh, and then you extend into how could you have service experiences, leveraging your data to augment something in front of you where you could actually have a dashboard of your data that the advisor and yourself can sort of play around with and look at in different ways. And then you start to think about, again, how day-to-day -day financial activities sort of blend into the technology that we use every day. And something like augmented reality is already here. Most people have a camera-enabled phone that allows them to display data like this in, in many different circumstances that would allow them to have smarter payments. You have patents around um, these things that are happening from PayPal and others. So it's like, again, it's, it's going to be something that in less than five to 10 years time, we're going to take for as much for granted as we do smartphones today. Yeah, and no, I think you're probably right. We're sort of just at the tip of that iceberg, starting to see some people playing around. We've seen people on the Finnovate stage kind of sticking a toe yeah. into the water, and typically, you know, you've seen that kind of timeline. Five years seems realistic from right. where I'm sitting as well. Um, so are there any real world examples in the banking industry that you've seen, you know, augmented reality done well at this point, or is it still to come in your eyes? No, I, you know, just this past week at Google I.O., they started placing data on top of maps. Mm -hmm. And you have banks in the Middle East and banks in Australia that are actually leveraging that so that as you walk down the street, you understand, okay, this is my like out of network ATM mm -hmm. versus my in network ATM. This is where I'm looking to buy, you know, shoes and I've been looking at them and here they are and they're on sale. I mean, it's those type of things that are actually starting to be put into place that are starting to have an impact in the way that we think about our shopping experiences, how we could actually save money and fees and these types of things. So it's just starting. What's really interesting is how banks are starting to do it with training, mm -hmm. right? So Fidelity and some other banks are actually leveraging this to have experiences using the headset so that as the advisor is talking to the customer, they're starting to show cues of what the customer is thinking and what the facial expressions are saying so that the advisor can start to become more adapt to understanding the emotional response yeah. from that conversation. And then they flip it around and they see after that conversation what the customer was saying hmm. to the people around them and their family and how they were experiencing what they just heard in terms of information. So it's not just you know, how I buy a car, or how I buy a pair of shoes, or a house, it's actually starting to change the way that we show empathy. Yeah. And this is what technology should do. No, that's, that's a really interesting point. And I think, you know, a lot of people have for a long time been trying to get into the minds of consumers. Yeah. And now you've got an, a way that you can, not in a literal sense do it, but at least get some of that experience, right. which I think is, is really interesting. So from my standpoint, I kind of look at augmented reality as being slightly more useful at the moment than virtual reality. Um, is that an opinion that you share? I think the technology would show that as well. Mm -hmm. So again, you have much more sort of expensive setups to do untethered uh, virtual reality. Yeah. And that price point is coming down, the computing power is increasing. 
Um, we will get to a point where it's as immersive, but we're still, I think, able to display something through your camera that enhances um, our day-to-day -day experience than actually strapping on that headset. Yeah. So eventually we'll get to this point where we don't have headsets, we're going to actually use goggles or we're going to use contacts. And, and then we'll have this, so cool those bugs point. in our ear. Yeah. yeah, hopefully it'll be better than Google Glass experience, right? <laughs> Uh, Google Glass, the much maligned uh, right. Google Glass, although some obviously amazing technology that, that went into it. Um, you know, one question we kind of touched on, um, can, you know, does, does using VR, AR make the banking experience more personal or less personal? We kind of have skirted around it, but I mean, I think from what it sounds like, potentially more personal, but is there yeah. a danger there that it could be less personal? I think with any technology, the, the question is, why are we building it? Yes. Um, you know, when you see some of the demos in the past using the headsets, it's like, here's your ledger of transactions <laughs> and you can play around with it. Well, it's interesting, but it doesn't really add value to the extent that you're being closer to your bank, yeah. right? It doesn't show that they understand you any better. So why are you building it? How are you actually doing something that's not just for, hey, look, I'm working in a neat new technology and I'm going to put it in front of customers in new ways versus I'm adding value to your life. Yeah. So again, I don't think you innovate just for innovation's sake. I think you innovate to actually bridge the gap to something that you're not delivering today. Sure, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. Well, um, that's, that's the time that we have. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks for joining us on Finnovate Thank TV. Thank you so much, Greg. And I look forward to seeing you at many future Finnovates to come in Absolutely. whatever role you uh, end up adopting. So always Thank a you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.